Salamat Pagi, and welcome to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, the Let's Try program here on the Mighty Loading Ready Live Video Entertainment Network. My name's Ian Horner, and joining me today is no one because today we just got one project on the docket, and uh, boy oh boy, it's been one that I've had in my head for a recent, a recent, a decent amount of time. Uh, had the materials around for a while, had it sitting around, and thought, huh, F it, let's just do it for once. So uh, we've got Matt Griffiths on camera and Beej on the board with us today. Um, he's not here at the moment, but yeah, let's uh, let's start talking here. This is I'm I'm looking forward to this particular uh, this particular project because this is something I haven't done before ever, which is to say I'm going to be uh, drafting a a leather work bag from scratch there's there's no pattern so far what you see in front of you is what i'm working with which is to stay that there are a few things that i will be working with this is a bag i got a number of years ago i'm gonna say back in 2007 uh because i bought this while i was living in japan uh at a festival called the design festa that happens at the tokyo big site which is the uh, the big convention site in Tokyo. Well, technically it's in Odaiba, but we're not going to split hairs here. If you are in Japan, or if you're going to Japan, I recommend looking up when design festas are, because they're kind of a... It, the best way to describe it is, imagine an artist's alley at a, uh, a Japanese animation convention, except only some of the stuff is anime-related. There's very little pen on paper artwork and everything is extremely 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 well done and so this bag i picked up for i think it was 20 bucks and it's it was part of what i was considering you know my my indiana jones kit and it's i mean the inside of the leather is kind of rough but i don't mind that at all design wise though it's almost a perfect satchel for me it's big enough that i can hold like two or three standard sized deck boxes in there there's some space up front for some paper and you know you fit pens and whatnot in there but there's a few things about this this bag that i don't like and matt's actually got one of them on uh the screen here right now and it's these buckles i hate them because they so much just fall out and then you have to get you have to find a way of getting the buckle back into the into the hole here. Let's see if we can... This is a constant struggle for me. Very, okay, finally the buckle's back in and then it just closes with a, you know, a friction fit little dot there. I don't know what the actual name for those is. But, uh, yeah. So the problem is, if, uh, if this isn't connected and if the thing decides to fall out, I just lose the strap. And thankfully, I haven't lost any straps like that yet, but this is one of the problems I want to, to fix on this particular design of bag. The other problem I have is that uh, it's a little too small. I want a bag that I, that's kind of just a day bag, a, a go bag for taking to the office back and forth. Because currently, <laughs> I've got this guy. Which is That's this? A good bag. This is my daily my daily driver. This is a Saddleback, medium size in the coffee brown, and boy oh boy, do I absolutely love everything about this bag, except for the fact that it's way more bag than I need on a daily basis. I can carry a lot of stuff in here, and that's part of the problem. Is that when you have a bag that you can carry a lot of stuff in, you end up carrying a lot of stuff. So. What I want to do is kind of split the difference and go something this size, maybe a little bit bigger. And this style? No, that's not even quite right. The point is, I've spe I have specific requirements. And I want to be able to carry a sandwich, a soda stream bottle full of soda, and maybe a little bit of extra space on the top for a charger or what have you. But just a few things in the bag and sadly this bag is too small for even 
a SodaStream bottle or sideways. It's also too small for an iPad mini, which is the iPad, my iPad of choice. So we just want to make this big enough for the things I want to carry. And to do that, I think we're going to have to draft a pattern. So my plan is to actually just start off by tracing uh, this bag and its various panels and whatnot, and then uh, seeing what sort of leather we've got available. And uh, like not just leather lying around the office. You mean like some like what is out there that you want to actually turn into oh, a bag? Oh yes. <laughs> Because, thankfully, <laughs> we've got the bag of goodies from, which was graciously donated to the show by a friend of the show, Ben Vandy Geek Swallow. And we've got quite a bit of some very, very good uh, Horween leather. And I think we have enough in the right sizes that we can hopefully together what we want. Like just looking at these pieces here, I think we might be able to do it. The point is, we're going to actually try to get a pattern drafted first, and then we can apply that pattern. The copious amounts of sheets and sheets of leather we have available to us. How many beasts is on, how many beasts worth of skin on the table? Actually, this is probably less than one. Yeah, it's there, probably like a quarter of a beast. Yeah, there's maybe, maybe a third. There is a lot of cow in a uh, in a full full leather. So uh, that said, why don't we get started? Ooh, got some of the leftovers from my previous uh, leather purchase, which is not nearly as supple as the the Horween is. All right. So to do that. We're going to need a lot of paper. And I thought, huh, I seem to remember the office having some, a roll of craft paper or some, uh, newsprint. some newsprint. Turns out the answer was no. Uh, so then my next thought was to go out and purchase some wrapping paper. Because I think that's probably the cheapest way of getting some, getting a small amount of decently large size paper. And then thankfully Heather uh, chimed in and said, hey, I've got some craft paper at home. You can use it. And so I'm going to. I'm exactly very happy the, about that fact. Exactly the kind of thing that you would use in, in pattern drafting, in fact. Exactly. Or, you know, and actually, I've seen Heather work on stuff that's even a lighter color than this before. But yeah. but yeah, it just needs to be flat. It just needs to accept our, accept our works. And uh, yeah, we'll take some measurements. We'll draw things out and we'll figure it out. Corvus says, first thing I notice is that the little satchel is vegetable tan and the leather you use, I think, is oil tan, which means you can't make a bag, but that front panel of the satchel is molded, which you won't be able to do. That's okay. I don't intend to do a double paneled uh, bag. I'm thinking I'm just going to do a single, uh, single front panel, which is good because I don't... The other problem I have with this bag is that I don't necessarily like the, uh, the stiffness of it. And I do like the... With the with the saddleback, it does maintain its shape, but the uh, the shape of the bag is maintained. It feels more due to the the thickness and stiffness of the the leather itself, and probably has a lot to do with the pigskin lining too. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna experiment. We're gonna try things out. So the so the. Um... You're not looking for something that's like a stiff kind of, like a case, obviously. Yeah. Um, you're looking for something that's more like, like binocular cases are definitely quite stiff. You're thinking of something that's a little more supple, but not as supple as like like a purse. Mm -hmm. Because it's just a little, not as that's not as what you want. Yeah, exactly. You and want some structure. Corvus points out that, yeah, it's a vegetable tan thing. It can be molded and tooled, but it is it is stiffer. And that's, uh, it's just a type of leather. There are different types. Though that's not to say I'm an expert in leather leather use or construction or what have you. But this is a let's try program. Mm -hmm. And if I don't try, then I'll never know. So, let's start thinking it out loud here. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do here is just looking at the bag itself and I'm going to look at the construction and try and think about what 
I want to do with the pattern. So this bag is constructed of one panel here. You can see the uh, slice at the top there. There's another panel across the top, and then there's this front panel here. So that's four panels, and I think I'm pretty certain that we can actually take that down to one panel, maybe two if we need to. But I would like to. I would like to be able to have just a single piece across the top. In fact, let's compare that with the uh, the other bag while well, we've got them all around here. So this one, if you look at the back of it, we've got this panel here, which creates the uh, the back pocket. And again, I don't know if we need that. I think we can think about it, but I don't. I'm going to say probably not necessary. The panel that takes the uh, the flap is indeed a single piece of leather that goes along there. So that's that's easy there. Back to the little bag. Little bag has another piece of leather that goes from there all the way around the bottom and ends again on that side. So second piece to make a uh, an inner standard, uh, well not even inner, I guess you could call it a uh, spacer? Sides. A single piece of leather is the sides of the bag. Same idea with the with the saddleback, but instead you've got two. One for the back pocket uh, pocket area, and then one for the four pocket area. Again, I think we're going to go with a single pocket design for this, so we'll uh, we'll only need the one side panel. But if we wanted to do a second one, we have that option. And then finally, we have the front piece here, which is again a single piece of leather. This one is shaped though to give you that secondary pocket. Out front, and we're not going to do that because we don't necessarily want that, and we don't want a stiff front like that. So you're looking mostly for like you you want a single pocket, like just just one large pocket on the inside of the bag, with a bit of structure to it, large enough to hold that bottle, and then other things you can put on top of it. Exactly. Right. That's kind of the idea there. Ooh, I don't necessarily like the external, uh, well, I mean, I have external bottle holders on this thing. They're too small for the, the bottle. And I don't really like the look of having the bottle outside of the, outside of the bag. I don't feel like it's pr protected enough. And I also just, I think it looks tacky. Well, you'd probably also end up with, uh, giving the size of the bottle next to the size of a bag like that. It's like, you'd end up with a third of the bag being a bottle holder. Yeah. And it would look really unusual. Yeah, and that's not getting in there. Really, the, the only thing I use my uh, my side pockets for is sunglasses case. And even that, I'd like to. I'd like to replace that with something made of leather as well. Let's be honest. So, uh, I think we're looking at... Side part is a gusset. Thank you, Chlorine. So, yeah, we'll need a gusset a front flat panel, or a, a flat panel and a front panel. And, uh, and then from beyond that, we'll need some bits for straps or for uh, things like that. You may want a sleeve for the iPad to keep it separate. Eh, that might be an interesting choice. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be putting the, the, the iPad in there with a sandwich and bottle, though. So... Right. Let's think things out here. Right, we're going to need a little bit of extra leather for buckle pieces and for possibly a strap, although I may look into possibly getting some extra leather for the strap just to do that more, more properly. Uh, in terms of closures, I think I'm going to try and replicate the closure on this one, which is a si single buckle that flaps down and then just cinches up, because that way there's nothing to fall off either side. You're, you'll be riveted up here, you'll be buckled in here, and of course that'll be riveted to the base as well. I don't know if we'll worry about doing any sort of a uh, 
in sort of a liner this time because a I I really like the interior of this of this leather. It's very clean and uh, very pleasant and soft to the touch. But I'm not going to rule anything out just yet. So let's think again about getting started making a pattern. So I brought along some knives and some pencils. Let's roll that up for a bit there. And I think what we're going to do is, at least for the, the back flap section, I'm just going to trace it out, but also, hmm, let's think about that for a second. Ah, I know how I'm going to do this. I want the bottle to be, let's see, do I want this bottle to lie flat in the bottom of the bag, or do I want it to be height-wise? And I think we could do it either way. I, I mean, really know yeah. So let's just have a look at our leather here, and let's see what we can, if we can, well, I mean, let's do it both ways. Let's do it first one way and see if we can match the leather up with that. And if not, uh, do it the other way. Ooh, though Brain Bosch brings up an interesting point, upright is less likely to leak. And that's an interesting, uh, that's an important question. Height-wise, you can grab it without dumping the whole bag, Ricario. Yeah, I think I like your answer there. Also, I like the, I kind of like the idea of having a, uh, a more vertically tall bag. That makes, it, it, it harkens back to the map, uh, the map bags of the, the World War II era. What else is there? Corvus asks, are you planning to do any construction today or just laying it out? We'll see how far we go. We might actually get into, I mean, at the very least, I am prepared to do cutting. I'm prepared to do stitching, too, if need be, but uh, let's see. So, yeah, I think the answer has come out down to definitely upright, and that will make uh, the tracing very easy. So, let's, uh, let's get started here. So, I'll start by, I'm going to trace, I'm going to use the curves of the original bag, because that seems like a... Uh, a good way, a, a a good cheat to use rather than trying to build our own curves, especially seeing as I don't have a compass with me. Uh, connect stick. Is this a special bottle? Yes, it is a soda stream bottle used for carbonating water at home, which I take with me every day to work. And so, yeah, I'm going to be using this bo bottle for a while. Uh, one other question came up. Horizontal would be better weight balance while you're wearing the bag if you don't have more dense stuff in the bag with it. There will be some stuff in the bag. I mean, if, if need be, what I can do is just add a loop to hold the bottle upright in the bag, which would be nice. You could even put it dead center and pile things on either side of it. Exactly. There are options. But let's trace some things. Sadly, uh, so Matt asks, it might be easier to take the strap off. Sadly, the strap does not come off of this bag. But it does stuff nicely inside of it. So let's go there. I'm just going to use a carpenter's pencil to rough out the edges. Okay, let's take it up to here. That's not the right shape. And then down from that side. Oop. Okay, and that's got us the bottom curve. And let's just draw the lines up the straight line axis there. Okay, hold it steady. Okay, so that seems like a good start in terms of finding out how high we want it. And then we're going to take some measurements this. And by measurements, I mean just eyeball the F out of it. So, going from the bottom of the bag, let's give ourselves about half inch of clearance just for fun, because why not? Uh, all right. And so, that puts the top of the bottle right about here. Which, if we give ourselves another rough half inch of playroom there. That's, that's the back panel of our bag. 
And that does kind of look, that, that's a pretty tall bag, but I kind of like that. It sits, it sits up against the, I, I feel, I imagine it's sitting up against the leg nicely. Uh, will the iPad still fit in an upright oriented bag? Actually, uh, Beach, would you mind grabbing me the iPad mini from the other room? Because we have one here. We can use it for, uh, for, we can use it for sizing as well. This is, of course, assuming I'm going to be keeping the iPad mini for a while. All right, and this is nice because this means, huh, am I able to get an iPad mini in this bag? Or was I completely wrong? I think the, I feel oh, like the thickness is a little. Yeah, it's a bit thick. And I think that comes a lot from the. Uh, the seams? Yeah, from the seams. But vertically, you can see it sticks out the top. But on this design, it's going to have, assuming a half inch on each side, that'll be plenty of space. Perfect. Give myself more of a seam allowance. This is chlorine. Uh, you know, yeah, you're, you know, you're probably not wrong with that. Um, I mean, I've allowed for seam allowance in this, but it's pretty close. Half inch all around, maybe more. And remember to allow for the width of the bottle when sizing your top panel to allow more allowance for the seams. Bob, the, uh, the Ninja Goldfish, you're entirely correct there. I'm going to be doing that. Half inch all, all around, that's probably not a bad idea. So what we'll do then is we'll make it easy on ourselves again and just use continue to use the pattern that it already exists. I know we did pattern drafting for a hat a long time ago on this show. But that required destruction. This, I want to keep this bag intact. So uh, let's move that an inch to the right. And that will give me a half inch on both sides for purposes of purposes of seam allowance. Cool. Okay, that still lines up straight with the bottom. Flip that open, hold her down, trace some new lines. And there we go. Now we have a slightly bigger bag, which if we If we can sew it correctly, we'll fit an iPad mini that way. No reason to keep it completely close and flush. All right. Sides will be thicker, so the top will also have to be longer by the same way. Yes, that is correct, which is why I haven't drawn the top of this piece yet. Okay, so. So what you've done here is you've used the back panel of the bag mm -hmm. as a way of saying, this is actually how tall I want the bag when it's closed to be. Exactly. Right, okay. Because I think, if like, I remember correctly, yes. Yes, I gave it a half an inch on both sides, top and bottom. So that's, the, that's essentially the top line here is this point of the bag here which means we're now going to need to decide this distance here. Which means we're going to need to think about the, the width of the bottle. So let's do some thought about that. So that's um, your ultimate distance is half the circumference. Correct. Right, right. so you could like... Half a circumference. I mean, that's assuming that we want to go over the top like that yeah. in a nice round method. I'm thinking what we do is we, because this bag comes down pretty flat at the top, right. I'm going to go again with a, uh, I'm going to add, uh, 
go again by adding another inch or so across the top of what than what we need. Mm. And then however far this goes, we can play with that, I guess. Oh, and you and you want the bottle to fit tight. Like you want it to land in the bottom. Cuz I said half circ circumference because I'm kind of like that will give you some play and you don't want play. You want this thing to fit like you want to go in and feel like it's sliding into the place it, it belongs. Reasonably, not yeah. not not completely, but Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, the sides will be thicker, so the top will also have to be thicker by the same amount, says Ethel Torian. Yeah, and you're right, we can always cut things shorter later. Okay. Right, I was going to measure this, uh, this uh, bottle. And I think we can mostly eyeball this. Thankfully, they provide some holes in the bottom that... I know really easy way. Oh. Ah, yeah. yeah, and then put the uh, put the. So you just okay. get to its widest spot. Yep. Or yep. Alternatively, lie it on its side. And, and do the same thing. Hey, hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> I would test out how pliable leather is for making the lid panel in one or more multiple parts. Gamsheet, the the leather is extremely pliable. So the hope is to make the, the top flap and the back in one part, so. Oh, but this is one of those rulers that has extra. There's a mark on the ruler that there's gonna be a little down on the paper and it just marks out. Yep. You don't need to measure how long it is. But you know what, I had this. You know, I got it square, but it's inches. <laughs> That's okay. Inches are fine. Actually, I think I'm good doing this. Okay. You don't want the square. No, that's all right. Thank you, though. Yep. I mean, three and a half inches. That's... I'm sure someone else has already looked at that as well. Okay, so three inches across. If we go up to four inches, that's probably more than enough. So let's go from here, following the edge of the bag that already exists, up to zero. And let's remark that top line. Again, I'm open to suggestions because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, this is great. All right, four inches there. This is actually turning out to be a lot of leather. So we're going to consider that to be the markings of we've got bottom flap. That's Sorry, your mic just disappeared for a second. Am I still back? You're, you're back. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to keep an eye on that, though. I might have to trade out your, your mic pack. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, it's all right. Uh, people are mentioning River Smith says it looks tapered at the bottom. Yeah, that's because the, the original bag's front had a, uh, a rounded and shaped edge. We're not going to do that so much. It's just going to be flat coming up to the front. You might, um, uh, and not to interfere with your process, but you might also uh, want to label air areas and places. Mm, that's not a bad idea. As you're going. I was finding that, the, I, I was drafting something at home, uh, and I found that I was getting lost in all the things I was drawing, until, and then I started like labeling each individual thing. I'm like, oh, now I like the way this is a lot better. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so that's the top flap, and... The bag is set up such that it comes down about halfway. Is that where you want it at the end? Yeah, I don't know if we need to go halfway, but because halfway is going to look pretty big on this bag. So maybe if we went up to about a third of the way. A front flap of, I don't know, four and a half inches? Seems good. 
Oh, is that interfering? No, not, it's not. It isn't interfering. That's interfering. Ah. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to put something there to keep it from rolling back. Thank you. Or the other direction. Oh, yeah. Maybe something to keep it from rolling there we go. We got it both sides. Good? Okay. Yep. Actually. Uh -huh. Both sides now taken care of with the power of leather scraps. All right. Well, four inches seems like a good, four and a half inches seems like a good amount of flap over. Yep, that'll that'll be a that'll be a flap, and that's about a, that's about a third, which turns out Intrepid Colin agrees with me there. So let's mark out the side, and then we'll steal the curves again. Four and a half. That's what we want that to be. And let's, now, if we've done our measurements correctly and our tracings correctly, those should come across at the top nice and roughly evenly. And it looks like they do. Just eyeballing it. In fact, eyeballing it with the side of the square, edge of this ruler, that's bang on. We're doing good so far, kids. All right, and we'll just lay down the bag and steal those good, good curves. And this side. Hmm, those don't seem, don't seem fine, okay. Front flap. Okay. So, top will be around a bit. Yeah, that's why we gave it a, a, a lot of extra space. Uh, and actually, we should mark those dimensions too, because four inches. That's going to be the size of our sides. So we're going to need, we're going to want to remember that size. All right. So the question is, do I have a piece of leather large enough to go there? That's going to be our first check. We lost your mic again. I'm going to get you a new pack. What we want to do now is we want to make sure that we have enough leather to do this. So time to go check that out. And we've got Assistance on the side. Oh, that looks like that we have some candidates. Very close. What if I take it down? Oh, ho, ho, guys. We've got... That'll do it. That will do it us for there. Please bear with me one moment. Go ahead and mute when you're ready. Go ahead, Ian. So Ian's muted right now. He's changing over his microphone. Yeah, just give him a second to hook up, plug in, and turn it on. Are you live? Okay. All right, I brought you back up. Thank you. Is the mic off? The other mic is currently still on, I think. I'll just power it off. I've already muted it. Let's see that later. Oh. That was the best one. Yep, that looks like that's gonna be our only choice if we want this to be one piece. If we want this to be this to be one piece, we've got one choice of leather, guys. And I think we do. So Can you separate the front piece if you want it? Uh, I could, but I think I like how I like the character that this has with this back piece. There are some nice skin wrinkles in there that I think would be just mm. give this some character. So I think we can safely, I'm going to slice this out of here. Uh, we can do the, the more intricate cuts. 
when we're ready to actually start cutting the, the pattern or at least drawing the pattern out. But we'll put down our handy dandy cutting board. Get out the old knife roux. Slice that down here. All right, and let's keep that with the piece of leather that it's going to go with. Set that aside. Okay, so we've got a front and back. That was actually surprisingly easy. Uh, okay, and Corgan says, I'd suggest if you can cutting this panel extra long. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a flap ultimately, so you can always take a bit off the exactly. end. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, also do check out Corvus's work. He, they do leather work as well. They've got it posted in the chat there, and it's real good. What you drinking tonight, Ian? Tonight we've got Moonbrow. The, uh, this is actually probably the last of the, or one of the last pints that we'll have of the Oktoberfest Moonbase Brow. Oh, nice. Huh. Good stuff. Okay, this one's going to be easy because this piece is just goes around it's one long continuous strip so we're going to i think we've been using uh we've been using about a half inch on each edge so an extra inch on both sides uh in which case yeah there'll be a five inch wide strip for however long that is now we want to check that i was just thinking based on the edges here now that's going to be an interesting one because i didn't bring any string with me but we can fudge it and trim it down later we can we can use the square measurement and then or we can do it the right way and wait for some string to show up uh bob the ninja goldfish do you have matching leather color width etc for the other parts of the bag is the idea to keep it the same or are you okay with mismatching yes we've got a pile of uh horween leather that looks gorgeous and is all the same color and is matching so we won't have a problem there <laughs> meanwhile We'll just wait. You might just want to take your square measurements, I think. Yeah, I think we're I'm just I'm not sure where our twine is. I think we're just going to take some square measurements and... Uh, oh, wait, we've got something that might work. You know, we'll see if this works. Like a string. Yep. It's a cable. <laughs> All right. So, thankfully, we only need to measure from the tips along the bottoms up. So if we start right at the edge there and follow the inside edge down. Oh, thank you. Actually I've got it at this point because I just need to come down around the corner. And I'm also going to be a bit uh, generous with this as well, measurement wise. Because again, we can cut it down, we just can't, we can't add on. Okay, that's a good following curve there. Hold that down there. Okay, and that is a size. So I can't let go of that right now until I get up my handy Dandy. Need a hand. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. Just want to be sure. <sighs> need a third hand. But I needed it a while ago. Nah. There it is. Oh, she goes. Ah. Measuring tape. So we'll just push that against there. And... Survey says we are looking at...
How about I do this instead? Well, by golly, we're looking at 20, 29 and one quarter inches. So if we take that to 30 inches, we should be okay. Thirty by how many? I said four, so five. This might be our hardest one. So if we start at five inches here. Let's get the wrong pencil. Five inches there. Working square because I'm all cool. We don't have. Oh, wait. We do have a. We do have a straight edge that's long enough to mark that off. Please say hello to the inside of this wood. So we line up our bottom edge, nice and easy. Okay, that looks good. And let's just give that a line. Lined. And then we need 30 inches. So there's 10. Really? All right, this is going to have to go in the other direction. This paper is not 30 inches long, which is good. Well, I mean, it's not good. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of leather. This might be our most difficult piece to find. All right, down there, and from there, across. That is. I mean, if you have to, you could. Um, oh yeah. Do three pieces and stitch it together. If I have to. At the corners, yeah. But I'd rather oh, not. Oh, I know, absolutely. I'd rather not too, and I'm not even doing it. <laughs> okay, that's ten inches. Twenty inches. Wow, what were we thinking? And that is going to be 30 inches. Whew. Okay, and then we want five inches up from there. Let's use our big board again to maintain straightness, which is generally not really desirable. Okay. Well, really only within drafting. Otherwise, it's completely optional. All right. And then we want to measure up five inches up from there. So let's make sure we're good on this side. Five inches is to here. Five inches on this side is up to there. Yep. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Not quite 30 inches? Not quite, but we can make do. We can do two lines. I mean, if you like, I can get you that T-square. You can draw two 90 degree corners from either end and then use the use it to actually uh, complete it in the middle. Well, the idea here is if I just follow the lines. Mm -hmm. They should meet? They should indeed meet. Ah, uh, perfect. 
I even managed to get my pencil kerf taken into account. Ah, oh, it's a good thing when you're dealing with things that require some margin. All right, so this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Um, I'm going to cut this one out so that we can properly look at it with the leathers. Uh, and this is uh, middle, what do we call this thing again? Gusset. Gussets. Middle gusset. How long do you want the strap to be? Straps? Well, that we're going to have to figure that out as well. Because thankfully, the bag that exists, I've never had to adjust this strap. So it sits where I like it on my hip. Be it either here or crosswise. I know that this is the length, so I could probably make it either this length with a buckle or just forgo the buckle entirely. Rip headphone users. <laughs> Rip and tear. All right, so let's do some cutting, shall we? Yeah. Silly. Well, I do have a rotary cutter, but there's no point in using a rotary cutter for this. Do it up to this line here. Ah, and we have graciously been provided with the leather itself. Corvus recommends that you would uh, make the bag with your D-rings in place. And then you just use snaps, so your strap is always replaceable. That's not a bad idea, actually. Run yeah. through and snap it in place. I Actually, that is entirely the plan I was looking for. Again, I'm taking a lot of inspiration from the... Uh, what's the name of it? That uh, The Saddleback bag. Yeah. Because, boy, do they make good bags. Do you want... Uh, do you want to remove those iPads from the table, or are they still going to be good props for the time being? I can sit there and just oh, okay. That's chill. Right. Ah. That feeling when you forget where you put, hid your tools. I'm hoping this turns out to my liking, too, because I would very much like to never have to buy a bag again. And I'm almost there with my... Well, I'm there with my saddleback. That's definitely all the office bag I will ever need for carrying around laptops, etc. But, you know, the, you're, you're walking around bags. I, I don't know about you guys in the room or anyone in the chat, but I, I've become... I've come to that point in my life where I don't like carrying a wallet in my back pocket anymore. I find it very uncomfortable to sit on, and I've... You know, it generally goes in my front pocket. Oh my god, I'm describing a purse. I'm making myself a purse. Yeah, exactly. I'm fine with that, but wow. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I did, never carried my wallet, my wallet in my back pocket ever, because it didn't make sense to me to... Because I'd sit down with it in there. And, of course, I had, like, a... When you're a kid, you get a kid wallet, which is, like, six inches thick. Yep. And so you jam it into your back pocket, and it's like, this sucks. My pants feel awful. And so I just gave up, and I was like, I'm going to walk around with it in my front pocket, my hip pocket. And people thought that was weird. Other other boys thought it was weird that I would put my 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 phone there. Oh, or yeah. my Or my, my wallet there. <laughs> phone. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh. We didn't have phones. Yeah. Then you got me hooked on the Jimmy. Oh, yes. The and Jimmy is a great wallet. It's a great wallet. I don't know if they make them anymore. I, that's why I bought three. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I bought the, uh, the the company where I found them in. Son of a bitch. Little short? So 
Yeah, we're just a bit short on that. So now we could probably, uh, if you if you go short on either side by a little bit, that's probably not a huge problem, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't want to go too short. The problem is, so let's have a look at what we've got here, and I think Matt's been doing some some pre looking for me and is has not shown up with another piece of leather, which to me, to my mind says, we probably don't have anything larger than this. So if we do a top down look here, we can probably... Give me a second. Yeah, we're right up against the edge here on this side. You can see by that. We're missing just that much, which is a bit too much, definitely, yeah. A bit too much there and way too much right there. That's our problem. So that leaves me with, I think what I'm going to do here is put a, put a cut in the middle and just stitch it down the bottom. I think that's going to be That's okay. probably the easiest way to do it, mm -hmm. but having a stitch at the dead center bottom of your bag with uh, like anywhere there's a seam is always going to be a weak point, right? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a problem? Do you think? I don't know if that's going to be a problem. Because otherwise you're gathering, because you'd be then gathering seams at the corners of your bags, which looks a bit better, but probably I have no idea if it's any stronger or not. That's mm -hmm. just even more seams. Just looking at this one here, uh, again, it doesn't, well, so it doesn't split. Ooh, something's up there. It doesn't split down this direction, Hang on. but this bag does split all the way around the bag on that direction. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't think, to be honest, that there is going to be enough weight in this thing that it's... Uh, I don't think there's going to be enough weight in it, in it that's, going, that's going to... Put enough load on that one seam. Yeah split it apart. Um, so what I'm thinking is actually we do single seam but going in this direction vertically and we sew it such that the seam is on the outside as well. Or just thinking about if we did the seam on the inside we could actually use that as the start for a as a way of actually like adding a section yeah, kind of not not a full section, but just something that the uh, the bottle could bump up against on the bottom. Right. And then we could probably add in the middle of it maybe a, a leather loop that we could hold the bo the bottle up halfway up. Uh, an alternate idea could be that you have one continuous long, like you get as much as you can out of that mm -hmm. to go down one side underneath and then curl up about like I don't know three inches. Yep. And then uh, then you put a seam in there. Because if your bag strap, wherever your, your, I don't know where your bag straps are going to attach, like where the buckle work and everything is going to mm -hmm. be, but if you have a seam right there, you're going to end up hiding that with the two pieces of buckle that end up. Right. But the problem with that is that then you're going to actually get all of your weight on the, directly on those seams. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of, yeah, that's very true. And that's going to be a problem. Uh, Matt, man, my, my soda stream flavor of choice is natural. Uh, the seam wouldn't need to be flesh to flesh. It could just be overlapping the two pieces, which would seem flatter. Seams in the corners, people are saying. Uh, there is a seam in the middle of the bottom. You have to be careful not to let it bulge so that it sits flush on the ground. I guess the other thing that... So here's some other reasons why I'm thinking a seam right down the middle is probably fine. I don't see this bag sitting like this ever because it's going to be too tall. 90% of the time, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on its back mm. when I'm setting it down. If it is going to be up like this, it's going to be leaning against something like a, a table leg. Or, whatnot. or more than likely, as you do with a purse, it's going to be slung over the back of the chair. So I don't think that being worried about putting having it uh, bulge at the bottom like that is a problem. Um... Yeah, thirds, I don't, so the reason why I'm feeling, not, not feeling three pieces is that I really, really like a nice curve on the edge like this. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't want to break that up. So I'd either have to like, put two pieces down right along there and just make it a hidden piece, but that then again, then you've got two seams and that breaks it up. I want to break up that line as little as possible. And there's absolutely no, um, there's no other piece of uh, leather sitting over there that could do the job, eh? I mean, I don't think so. Let me check that other piece that we were using for this, which was going to work. Does that work? Let's have a look at this one. Thank you. This actually looks promising. Let's get it on the overhead. Oh, it's again just that little bit too small. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, sides just end shorter. <laughs> I mean, that's also an option, right? If you if you how how far down does it come? Like how how much do you lose off of either end uh, either end? Well, let's have a look here. Let's compare it with the uh, the pattern that we've got. Bottom seam seems best. Yeah. And I don't mean you need to shorten it at all. Yeah. So this comes along like this. Goes along the edge roughly. This is such like it should be perfect, right? And I think it might even be short by a bit. Oh, already. Which is why we, why we do this. Okay, to so there, to there. Curve, there. This is not in any way scientific. <laughs> I mean, if you lay it down flat, follow the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Back to there. That oh, wow. Seems it very close. So, and you're already thinking you're going to lose like what, uh, three quarters of an inch off either edge? Yeah, I almost want to, to measure that again, actually. Um, you can't make it longer than that, though. Yeah, no, I can't make this any longer than it already is. But uh, we don't have our twine, do we? I can take a look again. Hang on. Thanks. Sorry. I might have something here that might. Oh, wait. Don't, don't bother. Hey, guess what I've got? Well spotted. <laughs> All right, let's do this again. In a more, in a more scientific manner. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. So that goes to there. That actually follows a line this time. Good. Okay, follow the line. This is why I like drafting patterns in a computer a little bit more. Yeah. Because you can just, you can look up what the lengths of these things are. Right. Less human error. Yep. Just haul out your iPhone and just have it do measure. Yeah, yeah, measure on the iPhone is certainly accurate to <laughs> within a millimeter. I'm sure, absolutely certain of that. Uh, All right, let's, and let's snip that right on the mark. So just because I'm curious then, take that piece of string you just cut, mm -hmm. measure it against the, the piece you cut, 
and see how far out they are. That's a very, you know, just for, just for fun. Just for fun. Let's see how just far out they are. Just for funsies. Hey, for funsies. All right. Point, point. Grab it. Well, that be doesn't able. make a lick of sense, then. So how much did it come up short? The string, the string, mind you, is a half inch short. Huh. Whoops. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Crap, now i got to talk to Heather. <sighs> so. I have, I have a stipulation for you. Do you? At Castlebian. That's not a bad idea. I don't know that that's going to be enough for us to fit it in there, but let's have a look again. Because I remember I added some for the, the piece. So how much of a cap is needed? Yeah. Mm, nope. No, I don't think I'm going to be able to make that work. That'll be a half inch on that side. And that'll be more than a half inch on that side. And that's straight. That's curved by... Let me just trace that onto the paper there for no reason. So if we look at about a half inch of half inch on this side, taken off, no problem. That still leaves us with this much overage on that side. Well, you know what? It's been fun talking about it, but I think what we're gonna do is we're just going to we're just gonna go ahead and uh, have a two piece with a seam in the middle because that's what I want to do with this project. Nice. And if I and if I do it badly or wrong, then I'll just cut another piece or another two pieces for the bottom and then we'll do it again. Hell yeah. We'll double stitch. Good call. Cuz otherwise it's a bunch of faffing around. So that means we're going to want to add about another half inch on each side of this. That's fine. So what we'll do is we'll fold it in half. You probably don't want to use your big piece if you're cutting it down smaller anyway. Exactly. That's a good point. So those will... Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That looks like almost a boot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's do that middle piece there. We'll add about a half inch on. Mm, yeah, thereabouts. We'll make it generous. Draw it off. Let me guess it. Times two. That's the other important part. Always know how many that you're going to do. All right, let's slice that up. Okay, and I'm going to keep this around because I'm going to have, I'm wondering, I probably shouldn't measure out pieces for the flap and hardware until I've actually got the hardware. So we're going to hold off on that and come back to it when we eventually do add the hardware. It's better to actually make the bag itself and then worry about your extras uh, later. Well, in. more importantly, it's I think it's better to actually make the cut the leather for the hardware rather mm -hmm. than cut the hard cut the leather in anticipation of no. the hardware that you don't know what it's going to be. That makes an awful lot I of sense. I might not be able to find a, a, a buckle in that size if that's what I want to do. But I do like the, uh, the style. They use and a lot of plated nickel, I think. Drink out of that. They do. Yeah. They do use a lot of plated nickel. It's it, a toxin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Known toxins. Okay. I think now we've got all the pieces we need. This one is sized correctly and cut out, so let's cut out 
our actual pattern so that we can start tracing that onto the leather. I think what it is is I think your beard is collecting static and it's touching the microphone. <laughs> and it's just causing it to... And uh, it's just causing it to pop out for a half sec. That, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense to me either, man. But <laughs> but whenever you turn your head that way, I keep hearing like a, a just a brief drop. And it could also just be the compressor kicking in and just being like, nope, I'm going to just eat this for some reason. Which is weird, but... Nope, I'm just going to compress her. All right, there's one piece. I've gotten very good at cutting with a ruler in the past few days because I had to recently do three sets of 50 business cards by hand for someone at the office. Not here, at the other office I work at. Arts and crafts days are my least favorite days. You'll definitely want to stitch the straps on the pieces of the bag before you stitch the bag together, otherwise you'll be stitching from the inside of the bag, which will be difficult. Good call there. <laughs> Thank you, Corvus. Ooh. Except that it should be... I, hmm. I'll do part of the stitching each time. I think there'll be enough space inside the bag that we can get the, uh, the needles through. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be punching the, ne the holes beforehand. Which I think is what you want to do. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> which is great. We're figuring it out as we go. Okay, which is the straightest line? This is the straightest line. Let's continue with the straightest line. Down we go. I might, it might be time for a new blade on this X-Acto knife. I brought my fancy one from home. That's how much I love you guys. He loves you enough to work with his best tools. Mm-hmm. Actually, I didn't even bring in all my best tools today. That sounded much better as a cut. Okay, that's another scrap there. Top and bottom are done. 80% of planning whether working for, for Corvus is the order of operations on assembly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, uh, Crazy Zoni, uh, the person we've been having doing most of our model work on TDSF so far has been Cam. And yeah, Alex has definitely been doing his model work as a, uh, as a relaxation to get away from the computer and the monetization of one's hobbies. Which is why I generally don't drink on stream to excess. Like I said, you got to keep some of your hobbies to yourself. All right, let's get those corners nice and curved. I don't like doing this with this thin a paper, but I feel like my curve cutting game is on point these days. So did you guys know something interesting about Apple's designs? I know nothing interesting about Apple's designs. Okay, well here's, while we're on the topic of curves, you, you've probably seen, uh, if you have an iPhone or if you've seen an iPhone or an iP uh, iOS device or even looked at any of Apple's designs, you think, oh yeah, those, uh, Apple sure, likes, sure does like their rounded re rectangles. They're rectangles with a rounded, you know, circled edge. Yep. Turns out that they're not just a circled edge. It's, and I wish I could remember the name for it because it has a specific type of name, but it's, it's a, they are doing a curve that does not have any sort of a tangent in the sense that it's an edge of a circle intersecting directly with a straight line. 
Yeah. They have a tapering curve that goes on the edges, so they're more of a more of a squircle, I well, guess is the best way of putting it. Because a squir a squircle is a is a squared circle. Yeah. Is a, it's it's like a, it's it's a, like a square had a bulge. Oh, it's a rounded wreck. Uh, like a round wreck, a specific round wreck is like uh, um, I think. God, I, there is an I, that's a generic, isn't it? Like that's just a term to refer to all rounded rectangles. Yeah, but it, it was interesting to see that the, the, the reason they've actually uh, that, that they've done or done this is that it, it looks a lot more pleasing to the eye. Yeah, like when you when you see them side by side, just the straight rounded edge, and then this this very gentle curve that goes out. It's uh, it's something that only certain CAD applications have the ability to to do easily yeah because otherwise what you're doing is you're just putting a you're just taking an edge and then another mm -hmm. edge and you're saying just make a circle between here and here and it's like i don't want i don't want a circle yeah. i don't want one quarter of a circle between two 90 degree edges I, what i want is i want this specific type of curve yeah it wants it needs to be more gentle as it around as it gets to the edge yeah yeah so the 90 degree angles on the on the edges of the the device are not perfectly straight like if i were to it's really weird because it's you don't expect it but yeah. when you see somebody break down the math of it you're like that's actually highly unusual it's in a way super subtle but if i were to place this here if you were to get super close all right well we'll see what we can do <laughs> and then get down to the edge where it's on the straight edge at the bottom there it's probably easier to go right down to the bottom yeah Yeah, you can see that it lifts slightly, like it's lifting about there, or starting to lift about there, and then it starts to get into there. We Corvus has the the picture exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so they do refer to it as a squircle. Okay. Yeah. Do, 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 looking down. Yes, ninety nine percent invisible. Have an article on it. Ah, good, good. Oh, it has curvature continuity. That's in, it. In that the there is no sudden jumps in the in in the curve. That if you were measuring it all out, it's like um, you're not seeing you're you're not seeing the uh, if you were to draw individual lines uh, coming off of it off of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's fantastic making yeah. this weird comb. Yeah, yeah, those 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 lines represent the uh, the, the angle or the yeah the angle of the curve. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. It's it's a ridiculous thing. Uh, Amori Lingue, I would actually think that that's, uh, playing card manufacturers probably do uh, use a similar technique, especially, I would say, our good friends at Wizards of the Coast. Okay. Well, that's a pattern. Now comes the... The front face? The scary part. Like, you've made a back piece... Oh, right, you you're right. You this is it. actually just, this is only going to do that. Yeah. So I need to do one more piece, and that's literally a copy of this. Which means I can just use this yeah. as is. If I just make a fold. True. Uh, no, I don't need an allowance for that, any extra allowance for that. Because it'll be the same amount of allowance. Yeah, the allowance is already accounted for on all of the outside edges of this pattern. And the, the top of the front is going to be a raw edge right across the top, like that. So there doesn't need to be any sort of an extra affordance in that direction. And the one on the bottom, the affordance is already in place. Wow. I'm smart. <laughs> now, if I recall, I mean, we've got those. Those are going to be our first side panels. Do we have enough space on this guy? The answer is, the answer may surprise you. Doesn't surprise me. This one's a big fat no. You go with the bag. Does this one have the seats that I need? Answer may surprise you. Ian may keep using that phrase. This is also a no-go, I think, so we'll put that in the pile. This one looks good. And is good. Johnny Bravo. Anyone remember that cartoon? Yeah, I'm sure you do. Okay. Well, 
Uh, hmm. No, cut the first piece, then cut down the pattern, or copy it and cut that down. He wanted you to cut the bigger piece first, and yep. then you could cut the pattern in half. But the thing is that if you cut the pattern up, then you can't redo it. Yep. Whereas just folding it means that I can I can still use it. I just have to unfold it. Yeah, Heather Heather would actually have a fit if I ever suggested to her. It's like, well, why don't you just cut down that like just chop up that piece of the pattern? She's like, no, no, you don't chop up a piece of a pattern why unless you're deciding I... to never use it again. Yep. You should cut the biggest piece first, anyways. Oh yeah, use your use your largest pieces of uh, of uh, leather up by cutting your largest piece first. Yeah. So let's hold that on. But we know what that one is. Yep. Um, now, here's a question. Is it about grain? It is not about grain. Okay. Should it be about grain? Well, I was going to say, like, is I don't know much about leather. Mm -hmm. uh, but leather has a grain. Yes, it does. Um, but does that mean that, like, obviously this big piece you're going to cut is going to be one continuous piece over the top and down, down the front, which is awesome. So it's going to have a particular grain to it. Mm -hmm. Right? Or is the grain not actually... The grain isn't like wood grain in that it follows a direction. Is it non-directional? Good question. Is that something... I, I think that leather does have a grain. Suede has a nap. But, it will, but I think that it's, it'll stretch in either direction, which is why if you, when, you're, when you're making straps, you generally want to put some nylon in, in between that's non-stretchable. Ah, uh, okay. And that keeps it from going. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, no, that's, uh, this is, th these are the things that I learn from uh, watching the videos from the Saddleback people. In fact, if you want to learn any, if you want to learn some very shallow information about uh, leather work, they do some great videos about how to not copy a bag, which goes into all the techniques that uh, the, the knockoffs use to make a cheaper version of these, and then the techniques they use to make a indestructible bag. So, that said... Pitter-patter, let's get at her. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of what I wanted. Right, I was going to ask for a ballpoint pen, but I don't need that because I've got something here that will do the trick as well. Not because of the ink, mind you, but because I personally find that a ballpoint pen or a gel pen, mm. it does lay down some... I mean, where's a good scrap here? It lays down some ink. But what I really like about it is that it's it's almost like a uh, just a marking scribe, mm. but it's one you can hold in your hand naturally, like a pen, and it gives you a nice nice solid line to uh, hang on. You can bring that up on the camera here if you like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Corbus says leather grain is directional, and it's also different depending on where the cow where on the cow it was. Some parts stretch more than others. Mm. But yeah, that's uh, that's that. You can also. I guess you use a pencil. I guess that'll work too. Yeah, either or. It's just a good way of scoring the leather to give you a cut line. But it mostly won't matter for what you're doing. Thank you, Corvus. Your your uh, your assistance in this is ex extremely appreciated. Okay. So this is going to be the hardest part for me, I'm thinking, because it's going to be... We want to make sure everything's flat. Want some scotch tape? I don't think scotch tape is going to help us much. I think it's just... Pins are definitely not going to help us. You know, what What I would... If I were doing this professionally, mm -hmm. or more than once, what I would do is I would probably transfer this... I would transfer the pattern to a computer design to match up curves, etc. Mm. And then on top of that, I would also probably cut out the pattern, and actually just spray glue it to the back of the uh, the leather. Oh, like uh, the, the actual, um, the rough out. Yeah, and actually, yeah, that's right. I should be doing this as brain bosh points. Yeah, definitely cut leather grain up. And that's where you can actually get that color, too. You can actually see. Uh, Zo for Cheese making a bag that's slightly bigger than the one I have, but not as big as the other one I have. I need a Goldilocks bag, and I've decided the only way to get it is to make it myself. It might be easier to put the paper the other way, so it doesn't curl up. And... I think you might be right. I mean, the problem is I'm going to need to deal with curve either way, because I want it flat when I'm actually pushing it down, and I want it to stick. 
it's this is just going to be a case of be careful always keep it flat always keep a hand pushing it down because the leather is also bubbly in an unpleasant manner place gone yeah this is very thick leather and i love it all right you know what there's no other way to do to do this but to actually do it ink is now hitting our good friend the leather And on. So, fans of Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry have will note that I have worked with leather before, but never to this size or ambitiousness. Flap is diagonal to the grain, so it's going to want to bend off axis. That's the if. Oh, if, yeah. So the natural way, okay. The natural way to bend might end up with the buckle strap up to the side a bit. So as the as the flap comes over, maybe the thing doesn't line up perfectly mm -hmm. on its own. But then again, I mean, you're working from <laughs> scrap leather. This is also part of the reason why I want to attach the buckle last. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is so that I can attach it in such a way that it's... Lines up. Yep. I see, okay. <laughs> it's all about that order of operations, right? Before I add a subtract, I multiply or divide. It's the order of operations. Got to keep that shit live. I like rap about math. Who doesn't? Uh, that's a good question. I, you know what? I don't know if I want to meet those people. So I popped open one of the how to cut leather tutorial things people were posting into the chat. Mm -hmm. And the person who was uh, just showing how they do it, um, they they also, they, they tape their pieces down using washi tape. Hmm. That uh, seems like a really good method. Yeah, but they also will use like, Painter's tape or something else, but they're just like just enough, you know, just enough adhesion to hold it completely still. Um, but then it looks like they straight up cut everything out with the pattern piece affixed. And I'm like, you wouldn't scribe it into the leather and then take the what? I don't care. <laughs> it's not up to me to make that decision for people how things are done, right? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I wouldn't have thought that was the way to do it. But maybe it's, I don't even know if that's like an industrial thing where it's like, oh, if you have the pattern, tape it down, cut around the pattern. It's faster than having to, you know, draw it out. Personal and, choices type thing? Well, because then maybe you're like, because you're drawing it out and then you you take the pattern off and you're cutting along a drawing instead. Maybe that's like, it's like that's an extra step. You've just wasted like 15, 20 minutes drawing out all your pieces on a single hide when you could just be cutting them out and getting on with your, getting on with the work. And I think that's like an experience thing as opposed to like, if it's your first time doing something, I'd want to be this careful too. <laughs> I mean, ideally, my ideal situation is I own a glow forge and I just put this into put the piece of leather flattened into the glow forge and have lasers cut it out for me. Yeah. And then yeah. also have the lasers drill the holes for the stitching. And then we're done this entire damn thing in one episode. But getting a glow forge, not so easy apparent these days. I mean, you know the money, but they have to take some time to deliver. But also I kind of want a K40 uh, Chinese laser cutter just because they're so hackable. That seems good. And of course, we can also, we can trim it la later too, a bit more. Well, I mean, we're going to trim the edges too to get them nice and straight once we, once we get them. Yeah. If you have a, uh, also though, I imagine if you have a medical laser, you could also suture the bag together just by, just by cauterizing the, the leather to each other. Oh, I'm sure that's exactly how that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see how this uh, this rotary cutter we got in the uh, the Chinese leather working tool bag works out for us. 
<sighs> do I want to use that or do I want to use the other one, the other bit? I feel like I want to use my tool and a, and a uh, ruler. Do we not any have any heavy shears? Heavy shears? Like that would be... Ooh. Yeah, but then you get the cut marks. If it's true. And that's what I don't want. You could test it on a scrap or on the outside edge. Yeah. Oh, to oh, see how it cuts. This? Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, let's get a little scrap here. Where's my little bag? Oh, look. One has appeared hey, on the table. Look at that. All right. Let's just cut this, this rough edge off here see how that goes. Uh, actually, let's throw it open over on the same side we're using. Start in the middle. Ooh. Oh, pfft. Hold that up to the roaming camera. Like a hot knife through butter. Very nice. Yeah, this ain't even a thing. Don't any of you office weebs have a katana you can use to cut it up on one slice? Ah. <laughs> uh. Central one, yeah, we got, we've got a rotary cutter. I, I don't have much experience with rotary cutters and how well they work with rulers. And I, I want a straight edge, but maybe I don't want a straight edge. I don't know. Also, I think I want to cut from the edge. Rock of eye. Okay. Yeah, that seems good and straight. Here we go. Watch those fingers. Oh god, that's nothing. It's like it's not even there. Because you didn't <laughs> actually I'm cut not through. actually cutting through it ah. all the way, or even close to all the way. Anybody want to do multiple sessions? Um, you know what? I don't know. I've never thought that I needed to. Hmm. Right, so maybe there's a reason for these rotary cutters. So get right through there. Let's, I mean, hell, hell, let's try it. Why not? First time for everything. Let's see if they work with rulers. Oh, wow. I might be converted, guys. Single pass, wow. Okay, you can get fucked. <laughs> I'll need you later. Yep, that's right on the line there still. <laughs> this is insanity, guys. How have I been so wrong to forsake the rotary cutter for such a Okay. Remember, you've got seam allowance as well. So yeah. any tiny little thing that's off, you can account for. Oh yeah, the head knife, Corvus, is something I kind of, uh, I kind of covet just because of what they, what they are. But yeah, I don't do nearly enough leather work to justify one myself either. That looks like an Ulu. Sit, Ulu, sit. I have one of those at home. Really? Yeah, I do. Huh. What? Well, why? Because my, my mother, I'm assuming, found a, uh, I think it was my mom, uh, found a thing on making food with an Alaskan ulu knife. She found this book. Really? And then next to it was, oh, here's the, here's the cutting 
um, there's like a cutting uh, board that has a depression in the middle of it, and you put all your stuff in there. Yes. And you cut in it with an ulu knife. Yeah, for uh, for herbs, I've seen those. Yeah, but you use that for like slicing up raw meat and shit, and turning into like you know, uh, because it's it's an Alaskan like Inuit thing. It's right? for making chitatap. Yeah. But for Alaskans. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So. And, and that's the that just kind of was like, oh, I have this knife now. What do I do with it? I don't know what I do with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you want to know what I thought immediately when she, when you said, uh, do you want to know where she got it? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? My initial thought was, did she come across a lake where where a fairy came outside and asked her if she dropped a gold in one of these? <laughs> she said, no, that's not my Hulu knife. <laughs> oh, well, is this? Silver one yours? No, that's not my Ulu knife at all. Oh, I'm glad you told the truth. I don't own an Ulu knife. Here is your Ulu knife and a golden one and a silver. I don't know what this is. Uh, Fairy tales are bullshit. <laughs> Straw pole's coming along nicely, which is good. Oh, good. Okay, I think... I want to make sure I've got this top bit straight. I think I do. Oh, that with a head knife you use the points at each end as opposed to the uh, the middle of the blade. Like the the middle of the blade gets involved, it sounds like, but it's not meant to be the primary cutting uh, implement mm -hmm. or section. Do wait a second. How wide is this supposed to be? It's on my. I didn't actually measure it, did I? I just... You just added in some extra. Yeah. Nine and one, two, three of those ticks. I never learned what your fractions are, America. Man, I like millimeters. I wish we had more millimeters in this office. <laughs> Hmm. Might be wider than they need to be anyway, but this looks right. Again, we can always Oh. Is it losing its sharpness? No, not really. Okay. Just uh, didn't give it enough pressure there. All right. Now just got to round off the corners there, and we'll be done. Let's try rounding with the this edge. Gives a nice round edge. I'm reasonably happy with that curve. It's not the best. Can you rub that down, like like take a file to it or something? Is there a way to sand leather? Yes. In fact, the uh, the way the accepted way to sand leather mm -hmm. is to use sandpaper. Oh, cool. That's a pretty close. Edge there. And then these ones are going to be ah. bit of a bitty. <coughs> and that one I hecked up. And this one I'm going to do this way. Just because. Nope, that's not going to work for me at all. So we'll round it off. That's not even at all. Oh well, maybe we'll make that the top. But 
Actually, we are pretty close there on both sides when you even them up. You can take some sandpaper to that. And yeah, boy, that doesn't look half bad. You sand be you'll sand before you burnish, especially if it's two pieces of leather stitched together even to even them up. You are correct. That's exactly what I'm planning to do. Okay, that's one piece. Let's get the, uh, the top piece. Why not? So for that, we were going to use this piece here. You can cut by rolling the blade or by holding the handle mostly, and it's gone off the edge. Oh well. You can cut, you can cut by rolling the blade or by holding the handle mostly horizontally and pushing it, running that pointy end along. That's on the head knife. Mm -mm. On the head knife. All right, so this again, we have, once again, we have a straight edge. Let's, what do we look like here? Neither side is particularly better than the other, but I think I'll go, I'll butt up against this edge. Ooh, actually, that's a better idea. Hmm. If I can save any amount of leather, uh, it's always a good idea. Again, we'll butt up against that edge. in a bit. Okay, and then we'll just hold that down with the ruler this time. Be extra good. And then we'll do this side. And then I'm going to show you a little trick that you can choose to use or not, depending on your choice at home of how you want to do it. Okay, for the kerf. Okay. So we got these two pieces. Now, we wanted one of these sides to be the top and one of these sides to be the bottom. So let's... This has got a, uh, a little mark in it, if you can see there. Um, do we want that to be on the front? We do not want that to be on the front. So, that's going to be on our back, which means that this side oof, is our front, which means we can actually work on that a bit as well and get that looking nicer. We've still got some... We'll trim that down when we get there, but I don't want... I don't really like this being on the front panel of the bag at all times. So, we're going to, this is the front panel, correct? Yeah. Put a grommet through that one hole and you can, I don't know, put your right. headphones through it. So that side is top, this side is bottom. Right, perfect, that's the way I wanted it. That's the way I wanted it. We line up the sides that are the same there and that way, if we trace around the pattern, or rather trace around the piece that we've got, we can make sure that if we follow the line perfectly, which I will do a better job of this time, <laughs> that the curves will match up. Nice. Roughly. Okay, let's cut this out. Oh, Hooded Bowman, thank you so much for the compliment. I'm really, uh, I, I happen to enjoy this show a lot as well, so it makes me very happy that there are those of you out there also who enjoy hanging out. Ian, I don't think you can burnish the type of leather you have. That's a veg tan thing. Please test on the scrap before you try on the bag. Will do. Will do. Uh, I think, honestly, this might actually be vegetable tanned as well, but it's a different process. But we'll double check. I think it... 
you might, I, if I recall, there's one piece that actually has a marking on it that lets me know what's what's being used, and I might have actually used it in another project. <laughs> All right. And front piece goes down to there. I'm going to have to buy so many wheels from China. <laughs> you know, I haven't had this much anxiety about when to cut things, or where and when to cut things since I last worked on my old motorbike I have a real problem with effing up good materials and that just comes from a fetish a fetishization of materials which one doesn't always need to have all right That's much better. Just have to take it slow and easy. And also do not cut your fingers. Be hyper aware of where your fingers are at all times. Mine are the ends of my hands. And that's a good curve. That one's a little bit out, but we can sand that down and we probably will when it's time. But boy, oh boy, that looks like a nice back plane for a uh, for a very nice bag oh that's gonna get so nice and distressed mm. okay so we have bag front bag bottom it'll flip over and connect up the top like that roughly guys I'm excited this is starting to really really come together and look good Sure. Yeah. So this is what we're looking at so far, guys. It's like a document bag. Yeah. Ooh, I'm actually no questioning my type of uh, enclosure, and I might actually want one of those slip uh, hole through lever based enclosures. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll discover. We'll figure that out later you could always like uh, recover something maybe off of uh, off of another bag at value village yeah. or something too yep much like electronics parts you can recover project parts from thrifted junk all right you want to uh, keep rolling you want to take a quick break uh you know what actually now seems like a very good time for us to take a quick break and we can cut that final piece and then maybe start looking at uh, doing some holes. We'll figure it out. Don't go away, though. More Tinker Tailor Soldier Fries coming up after this. Mm, welcome back to Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry, where we are putting together a leather satchel, bag, purse, whatever you want to call it, but from scratch. We are drafting the pattern ourselves. In fact, we have drafted said pattern and we have cut panels we are not complete with our cutting yet we got two more strips to go before we can consider I want to say the main body of the bag finished and uh, yeah let's let's jump right back into it so this is not our strip this is a piece of garbage so that goes in the garbage pile just like yours truly and uh, this is our piece of middle gusset. And we need two of these. Thankfully, our Matt has helpfully provided me with the pieces of leather we'll be using for this. I'm just going to have a look at these to make sure that they're good. This is, oh yeah, that's just 
discoloration from the chemicals you rub that just rubs right out it's not white at all and of course I'm sure we'll want to give this a full treatment when we actually get it sewn together but let's begin putting things in my watch has died so I'm not getting the notifications my phone is that's terrible did you guys see the uh, the person who ended up cosplaying as, uh, what was his name, Lex Luthor? Specifically, 40 Cakes Lex Luthor. Oh, no kidding, really? Yeah, yeah. He, he even had the cart that he was pulling behind him with the 40 cakes on it. I've seen like three of them. Three individual people. You, wow. Matt, Matt has seen three individual people uh, as 40 Cakes Lex Luthor. <laughs> Just... <laughs> In the darkness of the future, there is only 40 cakes. <laughs> Warhammer 40 cakes. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> somebody's has to do a t-shirt by now. I want or a something. mod. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> Warhammer 40 cakes. And, that, <laughs> and that's terrible. <sighs> okay, F it. I'm going to capture that. <laughs> I don't know what we do with it. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll figure something out. TM, TM, TM. That's uh, yeah. TM DC, I'm sure, probably. All right. Let's lay down a ruler here. and Let's get some nice, nice straight lines. Oh, so plumb. Slide you down, slide you down. Let's get the rest of you in there, right up to the corner. That's good. Okay, why well, do we got you there? Let's also get this straight edge. This is it good? Yeah. Sure is. Hi everyone, welcome to my name is our ASMR videos. Today I'm gonna to be grinding my cheekbones, so uh stick around for that. We're gonna use this angle grinder we found. And a diamond wheel so it doesn't take too long. Well, thank you, Andy Pandy, and thank you for staying up for watching us. Oh, hey, wow. 4 a.m. You know, I've never actually been to England, and I really need to make the time. You have, And you've traveled to Europe. Yeah, I've done, I've done a good portion of France, but not jolly old. Mm. Uh, jolly old England, not jolly old France. No one refers to <laughs> France Nobody. as jolly. No. Least of old France. <laughs> I know that's a stereotype. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't mind. I don't. I'm a quarter French. But what am I going to do about it? I believe you will separate from the rest of yourself. <laughs> We have people here from Finland as well, actually, which Ooh. meets at 6 a.m. there. Also, I really tried to work into the latest mail time. I tried to convince Heather she should put in a perakala joke, but she didn't want to do that. <laughs> I was a little disappointed in. <laughs> so in my Mastodon feed, I have uh, one of my friends has been listening to something they call Bad, ra bad Song Radio or something along that line. Right, lines. yeah, I saw her post that. Yeah, and they've got... Uh, it, it's just great because it's just what they, people consider bad songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, uh, like Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer? Exactly, that sort of thing, but all through the All year. the bad songs. And the great thing is they've got apparently a bunch of the songs from Spitting Image, <laughs> including the holiday song. Yay. I, I really feel bad that I missed 
out on Spitting Image when I was when it was on broadcast on television in Canada for no good reason. It's the just the kind of thing that a that a eight year old Canadian boy would really attach himself to is yeah. If you want to wonder weird British if, satire, if you want to wonder why I am the way why my humor is the way it is, look back at imagine an eight year old uh, getting their idea of what comedy is from these rubber British puppets doing political satire. Matt, Matt, man, I'm not putting that much uh, uh, pressure on the blade at all. Crazy Sony, Ian, a lot of these songs are on various Dr. Demento compilation CDs. Crazy Sony, I'm old enough to remember back when everything on the internet that was humorous was written by Dr. Demento. Yeah. Or at least attributed to. Yeah. Or Weird Al, one of the two. And for a Weird Al aficionado like Beach and myself, mm. that was really infuriating. <laughs> right, because you would go download somebody's, uh, be like, Weird Al put a new yeah, song out? Like, and you go download and you're like, like, that's not even him. The only gay Eskimo? That's not a Weird Al song. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah no, the, uh, Ricario says, or if it was Canadian Arrogant Worms. And yet, I didn't see that happen as much. Yeah, the, the problem is the Arrogant Worms don't get credited for the songs that they have done. Yeah. Last Saskatchewan Pirate. <laughs> that's, that's a Captain Tractor song, isn't it? No, nope. no, no, it isn't. No, no, it isn't. Captain Tractor covered it. They sure did. They because made it they very have popular. Good, because they have good taste. Yeah. Ah, what sort of shredding mechanism will we be using on this bag of metal clasp? Haven't decided yet, Andy Pandy. We're going to see what it looks like when we get it. Two three-inch uh, rare earth bar magnets. Ooh, that's actually not a bad idea, too. Clang. <laughs> I mean, nothing's been magnetically uh, sensitive since the old, what, uh... uh the, uh, the hard drive iPods. Yeah, since, yeah, since hard drive iPods went away. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. War of 1812, which was written by three dead, dead trolls in a baggie, but, again, gets attributed to whomever people think of at the time. Yeah, arrogant worms in this case, but, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, the... Wow, Matt, man. You're the only person I know of who actually remembers or has mentioned the Mountain Animal Nature Trail in a long time to me. There's a song I haven't heard in a long time. I remember seeing the Arrogant Worms alive, and that was one of my favorite concerts because they were so small and so Canadian. In Spruce Grove? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I went with you the second time they came to Spruce Grove, I think, because... You were like, we got to go see these guys. And I'm like, yes. Okay. I mean, I know they're supposed to be funny. And like, well, they are funny. I'm like, good. Then yeah, I guess I'm going to go see them. Because you weren't a fan at the time. I didn't know about them yeah. at all. Like, I discovered them at the Edmonton Fringe, actually, uh -huh. one of their shows. Okay. And then just be... No, it wasn't the Edmonton Fringe. I discovered them at the Vancouver Street Performers Festival. Oh, really? They did a, they did a set there. And then I bought all the albums they had at the time and... Fell in love with them. Also, another group there that I completely stole the bit from when I was 12. Hoople? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have people from all over the world in here. Let's see if any of them remember the name Hoople. <laughs> Do you know Hoople or Gaijin Invasion? <laughs> I am... I am actually a little surprised in myself that I remember the name of Hoople. I'm amazed that you do, too. <laughs> It is not Mott the Hoople, no. No, and they... Uh, they spelled it differently. I don't know if... I I think most of their jokes, or most of that bit that I stole, age as well. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's so much uh, stuff that I've stolen. I did not I did my brother's um, weddings. Uh, I was a master of ceremonies. Mm. It was me and another guy. Um, and the end, for some reason, it all got kind of shoved onto me more than anything else. But... Um, I basically did everything, all all of my bits that I did, I stole from uh, Simon B. Cotter and Rowan Atkinson, all sorts all sorts of wedding bits and stand up bits that I did. I just basically took like a bunch of material from all of them, I did a bunch of stand up and welcome people for whatever, and <laughs> everyone was fine with that. And I was like, thank 
Christ. Because I'm like 18 years old and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this thing. Oh, I know. I'll just steal a whole bunch of jokes because that's what everybody does. So this this is something that uh, Merlin Mann has talked about recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, th- that there's a few different, I want to say, prototypes of, of children and humor. So there, there are people who are, who just recite on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And are, and are funny there that way for their peers. And then there are, I, there, there are no children who are just straight funny, who are original funny. It's it's all about repetition, learning what what works, yeah. learning timing, etc. Yeah, it's the it's the kids like yourself and myself. I think I'm going to say that grab the humor of the generation before us, right? And grab all those references, and because they make our parents and our parents' peers laugh. Right. So we get all these Johnny Carson jokes and the this is why we know who uh, this is why we know who Johnny Carson is to begin with. Yeah. Okay. I can buy that. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we this is why Frasier is considered good humor. Not necessarily because Kelsey Grammer is great, because Kelsey Grammer is great. Right. It's because our parents loved cheers. And therefore, oh, Kelsey Grammer's on that. Well great, now we Wow, your mic cut out for an entire second there. That's weird. Huh, very odd. I think it is a static thing. But yeah, also people, you know, like Bill Cosby at the time. I mean, uh, I learned Bill Cosby routines backwards yeah. and forwards. Steve Martin. I, yeah. I, I went with, uh, God, what was his name? Dennis Leary. Yeah, me was, too. Yeah. Yeah. God, I have I have Dennis Miller CDs. Yeah. That I have no idea I'm going to get rid of. But uh, because I kind of don't give a shit about Dennis Miller. But like, it's almost like we lost an entire generation of uh, of of comics to repetition. Because I can't name very many big name ones from our generation well that's because alternative comedy was a thing we weren't getting a lot of like because <clears throat> living in canada uh we weren't getting exposed to a lot of alternative comedy they were they were touring in small areas like mm-hmm. like um the from our generation would be people like uh ben stiller and Jeanine Groffalo. Mm-hmm. but they were getting contracts on hbo which we didn't have in canada uh, growing yes. up um and that's even once they got contracts they were doing alternative com- comedy uh and like going to the comedy store and doing stuff like that, we weren't getting any of that up here. So we had to go with if they appeared on Just for Laughs or not. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, that's why we lose so much of that. Because also, not every place in Canada, if you, everyone got CBC. But for some reason, not everybody got every episode of Just for Laughs, which continues to piss me off. <laughs> I wanted a reliable way to tune in and uh, every week and watch Just for oh, Laughs, and there was no way to do it. But everyone gets Just for Laughs gags. Yeah, yeah. Because that's universal humor that everyone can enjoy. <laughs> um, Sid previously headache asks which generation which Mitch he- was Mitch Hedberg, and Mitch is the generation that followed that generation. Hmm. Um, Mitch is like because Mitch was our age. Yeah, I would call Mitch Hedberg part of that. What I'm calling the lost generation. Yeah, because like um, guys like John Stewart and Janine Garofalo and Ben Stiller and all those guys were doing those things all together. Um, at different times in different places. And, you know, the <clears throat> the people like Mitch Hedberg were coming just on the just on the tail end of them. People like Patton Oswalt were, like, coming up uh, around the same time, but it took them a little longer to grab on. Louis C.K. was the same way. Um, yeah, it's comics now, like Hannibal Buress and um, uh, Wyatt Cenac and, mm. like, guys like that. I'm like... Well, like Carmen Esposito. Yeah. And John Hodgman. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Esposito. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. But I know, and um, who, uh, Maria Bamford. Yep. Like, that's a new generation of comedians, as far as I'm concerned. Agreed. Yeah. Because they, they're arriving a little bit later than everyone else. Okay, so we've got our pieces. And what I was thinking for stitching was just grabbing these two pieces and giving it a little pucker at the bottom like that. Now that's what I'm thinking, but you also did, you did add in enough seam allowance. You said that you did. 
I did, but I'm also realizing a possible problem with what I was thinking. So, bottom to bottom. So let's say that bottom to bottom is good there. Let's start at the top and work our way across. Well, let's work our way across the edge where you can see. Okay, top to top. Work your way around the curve and that is well past the bottom edge, which is exactly where, where past the middle edge. Because you want that overlap. Exactly where you want. We don't necessarily want overlap, but because we were going to think about doing a thing up into it to make a nice seam that way. But, but here is what I'm worried about is that how does this ripple out with that? I feel like like when when you when you when you sew the two pieces together at the bottom, then that seam also then has to be sewn into the yeah front and the back. So let's have a look at how it's done professionally. So that forms a solid edge around there. <sighs> I think what we might want to end up doing, I think I've heard it before, is sew it up like this. Yeah. And that way it has it has the ability to roll up on both edges without having to be... Because we do it this way. There's going to be this section in the middle which is not going to be stitched anywhere else. So I think, yeah, overlap at the bottom with the flat and then we just, we really. I mean, it's going to be stitched quite thick. Oh yeah, it's going to be very thick stitches. Yeah, so you don't have to, it's not like you have to run all this shit through a sewing machine. No. No, you're no. just going to have to punch a hole that kind of holds everything together. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to be fine. Yeah, I think we're going to be fine there. So now comes the real question of what to do, and this is where I'm, always worried about what we're doing oh, is... Corvus is a neat idea, actually, too. Corvus Sorry. does have a neat idea. You could overlap or you treat it like a paper box sort of thing and cut a square out of each corner. Yeah, that's... I was thinking about that, too, and I am a little bit worried about doing that, introducing, like, tear points and also trying to... trying to fit it in. I'm... It's hard to work in my head, and I don't think I like it as much as I did before. It may, the the whole if I can illustrate because I don't have a name for these, but the uh, the push it up in the middle idea where you make a gable kind yeah, of yeah, where we make that yeah that did appeal to me before, but it's appealing to me less now, and now I'm thinking it just might be better overall to do it in that way but thoughts from within the room um oh because <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say if you tried to make it into a hang on a second <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah right so because i'm like if you took these two pieces and you did like you were saying like mm -hmm. that so that's the bottom of the inside of your bag and then, but if you only stitched out to here. Oh, yeah. Right? If you only stitched into the middle and, like, really just doubled down, even, like, rivets or something, if you wanted to put something through there. But it's mm -hmm. like, but you, you stitch into there, and then you leave this extra bit on the, on the side, um, because this is going to end up getting, uh, this has to, like, fold out, right? Mm -hmm. The edge has to fold out like that, which means then if you cut this out of the corner, I guess the problem is that you have to cut this piece so that it doesn't, like, so you don't end up having a hole through the body of your bag, or you accept that there's going to be a yeah, hole Yeah, which there. is fine. So if we do that... Anyway. Thank you. That's, that's a good idea. That's an idea. Like, Hmm. Corvus says I'd overlap it, separately tearing the points. 
regarding tear points in general, you can cut the very corner of the cut with the punch to make it a circle so it won't start a tear. Yeah, I would maybe just overlap it too. Like yeah. That seems to be the simplest solution. I'm thinking that's, prob that's the simplest, but also probably the... Uh, Probably the cleanest, too. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, thanks. Bowling. Says, overlapping is far better. You're going to have a ton of problems if you try to mix turn seams. And that's what, what I was worrying about. Also, you are, you are a leather worker, so Great. thank we you. Got, we got a couple in the chat. Yay. Thank everyone for your assistance in this. So this is a kit I bought from Rick. It's got a lot of... It's got a lot of tools in it. It's got a burnisher and another look. burnisher and a little hole pokey bit. I think this is a leather roll. No, no, this is a a, a wheel with hole with, with pointy bits in it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is that to make the sp precisely spaced stitching yeah. holes? Or? Oh, I could have probably done some cutting with this tool here. I'm I. Oh well. Uh, yeah, there's. Your mic keeps cutting out. Yeah, it's actually, it was dead there for about like eight seconds. Mike is going crazy. Yeah, I... I don't know why. Don't know what it could be. Uh, like I said, we've, we've, there's a bunch of tools in here. But what, I, what I'm mostly interested in right now are these guys, which are used for punching the holes in the leather. It even spaces yeah the wheel with the pointy bits is probably just to mark the leather it says dark knock i believe that's the case yes uh right so in that case i don't know if we want to start punching holes just yet or not or if we just want to stitch together these at the moment actually that's the question. Uh, Crazy Zani, no, I don't think it's the, uh, it's definitely not the battery because we change the batteries every time we change them. And in fact, they've been changed already once today. Yeah, they're fresh. XLR connectors could be doubtful, but I'm not moving in such a way that it's going to be moving these. Yeah, uh, it literally just cuts out. And yeah. you're even when you're not moving at all, which is what makes me think it's a static buildup problem. Yeah. And I'm like, I've never heard of that affecting a microphone like that, but. No. So let's bring that around. So you'd use the wheel to mark the locations of the stitches and then the diamond all to actually punch the stitch holes. That's a good idea. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing that the scribe here is for, this is used for marking out the actual location where you want your, uh, It's, it's cut completely now. You are mute. I am I am mute. Okay. I'm going to change out your mic again. We're going to change out my mic. Change the rebel mic. Stitching chisel can be used to punch directly through, but with what looks like 10 ounces of leather, it may be difficult. Minx, these, this is very soft leather. I mean, I... Let's swap out again. All right, I'm going to mute you. So Ian is mute now while he changes his mics out. And I actually would prefer, let's change the microphone too. Yeah, let's get the whole pack changed. We'll just go back to a wide shot. It is unfortunate, but hopefully this will will take care of whatever the issue is. Which I find unusual, but that's okay. Yeah, there's no reason why uh, Ian's microphone should drop out like that, as far as I can tell. Uh, so we're back. Let's bring you back yeah. up. All right, and if we have another problem, we're just going to power on through it. Exactly. Now, I know that I'm not supposed to use... Do I know? I don't know. I don't have a mallet, but I do have a hammer. So we'll use that to just give you an example of how easily this is going to go through. Not quite through all the way. 
Ooh, we're going to want to get some leather underneath there. But... Yep, no problems there. Nice. These are sharp AF. I've also now raised my levels on my microphone so hey, you can hear me better. Good job. <laughs> so I'm just going to take this here and I'm going to measure out the distance of the stitching from the edge so that I can lay down a line to work from. I've never used one of these before, so I don't know exactly how it works. This way. What an interesting tool. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to use it either. I think this is what it's for. Is to mark a mark a line. In. Yeah. It's to. Oh, to get so it, the idea would be to give you a. Um, Heather has something like this uh, stitch gauge. Yeah. It's a gauge to that. Okay. It's a grooving tool. You can heat it up with a lighter or something to make decorative lines or grooves to put the stitches in. Hmm. So you don't have to use that if you don't want to, but... No, but it, uh, you know what? I'm, I don't have the skill to do it right now, and it's certainly not helping me. Yep. It's just all over the place. Although... Nope, it's all over the place. Okay. I'm not going to be able to control this in a well maybe I can if I do it huh before you do that I don't know how well it works with chrome tan <laughs> okay so maybe not maybe not I mean it seems to be doing I think, I think it's more about the if you heat it up yeah maybe it doesn't do the job properly it's definitely keeping an edge and it's keeping the line straight. So why don't we just give it a try along the edge here and see... On your back piece or your front piece? Let's do it on... Well, I mean, they're both front pieces from a certain from a certain point of view. Sure, yeah. Now let's... I mean, no one's going to see your gussets. No, that's true, but those are just straight lines. That's fair. Yeah, it looks like it should have a slightly different design if it was exclusively for edging, like one arm having a back stop, perhaps. I do have some... I think I've got edgers in here. But again, I don't know, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what all these tools are for. Coming from no experiences, Ricario. Yeah. Perhaps. Well, you know what? Let's uh, let's hope. Yeah. Do you think it will help you? Do I think it'll help me? Yeah. If anything, what it'll do is, if I don't f it up, it will uh, help me have a nice even edge. Okay. From the edge of the uh, from the. Would it be better to do it from the back? Is there? Can you even tell? If you no. Did it from the back? That that I tried out on ah. one of our test pieces. So, you know, I'm going to grab one more piece here that has, I'm going to cut a curve into this and just see if I can follow it in a nice manner. If I can, then I'll know. And if I can't, then I won't do it this way. Okay, so if I'm very careful, yeah, I can put down a nice line along the edge. I would just use paper's tape to make my line and use the punch to punch along the... Oh, do you have a tool that looks like this? You know what, Corvus? I think I do. In which case, that's what it's for. Aha! Yes! Yeah, it looks like a stitch gauge. Boop, boop, cool. Boop, doo, 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 doo. All right. Oh, 
Oh yeah. It's got a tiny little little hole in it. Little hole, dude. So we want this to be because I just want them to use the edge that they've got here. Okay. That appears to be the correct distance. Let's try this. Warning! This will actually cut some leather out near the groove instead of creasing the leather. Warning! Understood. I'm going to attempt to use the tool on the scrap and see if it does what I want it to. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. What a pretty line. And, really smart. yep, and, and, if I run along the curve here like this, the important thing is I can run along the curve and it still comes out okay. Well, there we go. Damn. Damn, I learned a thing today. That's so awesome. That goes against our rules. <laughs> I kid, I kid. That slogan is a joke. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm just going to uh, edge all these mofos. Nice. I'm oh, just going to make sure that I haven't effed anything up here. <laughs> Check the chat. Good. Groover, groover, groover. Okay. Let's go for it. Edger forward, never learning. Ooh. Watch oneself. Also check oneself before one wrecks oneself. It's fine. It's the yep. bottom. Right? It's the bottom. Yep, it's the bottom. It's fine. Most of that can get rubbed out anyway, mostly. Condition yeah. it out. Yeah, that'll condition right out. I would ask the leather workers, actually, is there, would you say there's a trick to it? Do you have to bear down really hard? Do you have to, is it, is there a smoother way to, to do it? You don't need to put much pressure on it at all, actually. Oh, nice. Okay. There's one. Kind of stressful. I mean, you have a lot of pieces of leather left. I do, but it's, I, as I said earlier about uh, loving materials, I always hate to ruin. Yeah, something. That's fair. I mean, there, even that if came you. Out very nice. I like the effect it gives. Yeah. Even if you cut into it uh, funny at a point. It's like, well, maybe you'll find another use for that scrap for something else. Yep. And you know what? This is this is kind of like also pre-scratching your iPhone. Yeah. And once, you know, what once you've what once you've scratched something, you no longer worry so much about getting that second scratch in it. It's true. So if you if you scratch it during the build process, you're golden. Hey Tesla, can you put a big old ding in my passenger side? From the factory. Yeah. That'll be $150. Also, Tesla, can you send me a car? Yeah. If you're listening. With a big ding in it. Yeah. Alternatively, I would also take one of your uh, one of your Merlin engines from SpaceX, but not sure what I'd do with it. But Wouldn't that be fun just to fire up for no reason in the backyard? <laughs> <laughs> Every car alarm goes off with a three-block radius. <laughs> 
You think that's the, the biggest thing that's going to happen? Well, no, I mean, you blow up your house. Yeah. And all the houses around you. It's when I lose the edge that things get to be worrisome. Because this is very thick leather. Is that a, um, like, how... How much of an angle can you uh, turn the cutter at? Like, is it is it completely parallel to the to the guide, or can it like be leaned out in front of it? Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm trying to think on that, and it's very <laughs> it's very close to the uh, the edge here. So it is very. Let me show you as uh, let's get the big camera in there, real nice and close. Zoom in. One normal view. Oh, so it's a it's a bar. It's not like a. Um, yeah. I thought it was like a round. So see that hole. Mm. Hold on. You see this hole right here? Yeah. That's what's actually doing the cutting. Makes sense. Yep. So that wee little hole there. And uh, yeah, it's not doing too bad. Makes things look smart. Let's you know what? Let's do all the pieces while we're here. Because why? This one, I'm, I'm going to be very Your gentle. Your mic is rubbing. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be... Uh, there we go. This one, I'm going to be very gentle with. Is that still rubbing? Yes. Another... I don't know how, actually. There we go. How's that? Very clear. Good. Good. Now put your beard into it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my face, chat. Mm. That's good beer. All right. Slow and steady wins the race. Because it's a rally, not a sprint. Go very slow around the corners. They're tricky. Yep. Okay, let's move ourselves back. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Okay. Now we can readjust. Now let's readjust again. Binks balling adds that they uh, they will move the leather instead of the groover to hold the groover steady, and then they'll actually guide the leather through mm. around a corner. That's a good idea as well. Yeah. I don't trust the. Uh, I think that the, the, the surface I've got it on right now mm -hmm. is too grippy. Yeah, way too grippy. If I had brought my cutting mat from home, that would be a different story. Or alternatively, if we were working directly on the table. But we don't want to do that because we don't want to scratch the F out of the table. All right. That's... I'm going to call that pretty good. It looks it looks hella good on camera. That's for sure. Yeah, don't zoom in. That's when it looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. And yeah, as uh, as true Womo says, this is my first time. I'm bound to make some mistakes as well. And you're right there. You have your curves sanded down to the point you want them. That's a good point. No, I don't necessarily. So I shouldn't do that to every side here. Uh, da, 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 da. I mean, ugh, that one looks bad anyway. So those ones are going to be fine. We can sand those down after the fact. The top ones here, these curves, uh, yo, 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 yo. I want to clean those up before we do anything else. If you're following the edge, you want the edge to be long. Yep. Exactly. And there's a bit of a uh, line there too that I'm going to cut right off as well.
clean up that. People are likening uh, your um, uh, your delivery style to things like uh, the joy of painting um, or the Red Green Show. <laughs> huh. Well, a lot of people like those shows, so I appreciate that. I sadly am not one of them, but <laughs> I appreciate that you appreciate my style of delivery. I, I am a big... I try to emulate as much as I can James May. He is my broadcast, my current living broadcast hero. I've had non, well, I have many non-living broadcast heroes. The most recent one that comes to mind is actually the man who played, his name I can't remember because it was a character that I really obsessed with. Binks is saying you might want to try an exacto for these corners. I don't know, but... I've been having good luck with the wheel, actually, so far. But I can see where they're coming from, and I think they're right. Red Green is also on Twitch. <laughs> Thank you, the true Wowo. Well -well. That's weird as F. Right? It'd be like if Rocket Robin Hood showed up on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, as a brand new streamer. Yeah. Breaking I think, it. I think they mean red green is re in replays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steve Smith isn't showing up as red green to do an, uh, streaming. Okay, uh, it's time to uh, sit down here with some Fortnite again. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, if the uh, Pochinki don't find you useful, they should at least find you handsome. Man, it'd be really weird. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Red green's. Uh, okay, Steve Smith's son streams on Twitch, and Red will show up. <laughs> oh, like it's sort of a, a Snoop Dogg situation. I guess, yeah. Okay. So I broke out the sand, uh, the sandpaper, um, and I think I'm relatively happy with those curves now as they stand. We're going to get a, yeah, okay, that's the best shot I can get. Yeah, those seem pretty good. This one might want a, ooh, yeah, a bit more. Even that out a bit. Sandpaper, good for skin. Take it right off. There we go. That is, you can no longer see the, oh, you can almost no longer see the straight lines of a bad cut. I didn't see you pick that up. Is that just an emery board? It is. Okay. It came in the kit. Nice. That's a bit better. Ah, yes. Those are some curves. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Now we'll do the, the groovinating. Please do not ruin. Let's start on the straight. I think I've said it a lot, but the uh, the reassembler from James May was one of the great influences for this show's development. Okay, turn around the edge. This is the front edge, so be very careful. This is what everyone will see and your friends will judge you. One of my favorite things is to make Beach laugh, and if I can do that, then that means I am doing okay as a comedian. Yeah, but I think I think the reverse is true too. <laughs> oh man! You know, I was going through our uh, or my hard drive the other day, yeah, looking at some old stuff because I was trying to clean things out. And I came across some 
old scripts that we did for the 99 yen challenge oh jesus which was a podcast beach and i did a long time ago oh, i don't wow. think it's up anymore but uh wow we were funny yeah we wrote some great we wrote some offensive shit yes but we also wrote some really great stuff oh god Specifically, it was the uh, the segment about breaking up with your girlfriend over email. I do not remember any oh, of that. Neither did I. What, I. what I think is funny is that we might have recorded more episodes of the 99 Yen Challenge than the 99P Challenge <laughs> were recorded. We should check that out. I'm curious if we actually end up writing more than, than they ended up doing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And then we may want to consider... Uh... <laughs> Maybe editing some of those episodes for content and yeah, putting them back up. I, I could see that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Corner the third. Are you stitching all the way around the flap? No, I am not. Do you need uh, stitching all the way around then? Do you need the groove? Uh, for look, yes. Okay. You're going to just even add stitching just so that it's, so that when you shut it, it looks like you're going to just put blind. Ex exactly. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, you know, sort of a finishing thing. Just the finishing stitch because I'm tempted to use my safety orange uh, thread on this. Oh, cool. Uh, Tassa's Vigil, this does not mean you're getting more Love Doctors this Saturday, because, I mean, well, we can't even, we can't even claim that. We don't, we don't know. We, we don't know what's going to be on live until we sit down on Saturday and plan it. Yeah. The most we'll ever have planned ahead of time is the, the Commodore Hustle script will be written, uh, and maybe the pre-record might be... Yeah, we might have a pre-record. And we, I know we do have a pre-record because I was in it and Matt was editing it. But that's not always a guarantee. Wow. Exactly. We've, we've done some really good work here today, guys. <sighs> now to mess it up. Yeah, now to really just completely destroy it. Time to put some holes in things. Fuck it up. Oh, so worried about this. Um, okay. What should we do next? If you're going to stitch, mm -hmm. you got to punch holes. Yep. So, I mean, we got to stitch anyway. Right. Not, but you not, know it's coming. Yeah. Is it today? And the answer is probably yes. Like, I think, I think you could punch all your holes. I think you could punch holes in at least most of your pieces by the end of the stream today. Mm -hmm. If not all of them, but probably most of them. And then at that point, is it like you've, you're you not going to sew it all together, but you are going to make sure everything's lined up so that the holes are in the right yeah. spots. Yeah, or, or assume that's the case. Yeah. So I would think that what I probably want to do is... Because, thank, so my previous ex, uh, experiments with leather... I've ended up doing each hole individually with a single all and then and trying to get them straight and it's always been ass. It's been terrible. And I think as long as we start with a single hole in the same place on both sides, as long as we use the uh, the thing, we should get even holes in the straight line because we're going along the edge. So I guess what I want to do is look at the, uh, the edge here. And it looks like they go not quite right up to the edge, but about three, about a third of an inch from the edge. Let's start that. Let's start there. Unless I'm given directions to not do that. You won't be able to stitch today, I think, because you'll need to glue the piece together first, or I would if I were making it and it has to dry. Well, Corvus, guess what? I don't actually have any glue. So, uh, yeah, that's something I might want to consider doing, too, maybe in the future. Um, but we can still get the holes in place. That's true. Wouldn't you want the holes in the groove you just made? True. Wow, wow. That is exactly correct. Yes. So in that case, we, uh, oh, there's an easy way to decide that. We'll just make sure that the first point is just outside the edge of the leather on both sides. And that way I can start this. So let's line up the bottoms. 
Normally you glue them together first, then punch through them all at once. Yeah, that makes sense. But, boy, how would I end up gluing these? You'd have to glue this side, punch, and then glue that side, and punch. I'm guessing that must be really good glue. Yeah. Like it must be some really skookum stuff. So, here's a good question. Uh, I glue before I made the holes, since the glue will just go into the holes. Yeah, that's actually extremely good uh, good advice, too. Uh, okay, that said, uh, so specifically for Binks and uh, Corvus, because I don't know what I'm doing, what glue do you recommend? Is there, a specific, is there a specific leather glue that I need for this? Or am I, it's barge contact cement, typically. Okay. <laughs> if you have horse leather and horse glue, can you just put the horse back together? Bear psychologist, I don't think it works that way. There's a lot of meat in the middle there. Binks, and some bones. Binks Bowling uses Weld Bond. Okay, so I'm going to need some contact cement then, I'm guessing, because I don't think we have any in the office here. Um. Also, if I'm... Now, if I'm not correct, am I also not going to want to clamp the leather together in some sort of a strong way along all the edges? Or oh, is that... No, you're right. Yeah. Or, or is it that um, you will cement one piece to another piece, and then when those things have had time to cure, then you cement that that compound piece to another piece? That's no, I I, I don't I don't think we're definitely going to be put the, putting the whole bag glued together in one piece. But I mean, even just trying to glue this part to this part, you, there's a lot of area that needs to be clamped shut. Yeah, cement together, clamp punch, stitch. And even then, it's going to need to... I wouldn't even have thought that that's what you would do in this case. I would have just assumed that you line things up and it's like, I'm just going to punch holes and then I'm going to sew and I'm going to hope to hell that everything stays the right <laughs> yeah, length. I'm just going to start doing this and I'm going to hope doing it and then I'm going to stop. Oh boy. Um, hmm. I think what I want to do here first is actually... Find out where these two pieces are going to overlap. Mm -hmm. And at least maybe stitch these together. <sighs> chrome tan is very... Okay, the problem with glue is that chrome tan is very sketchy. So the process of punching holes, you stretch the leather and end up with misaligned holes. Yeah, that's something I've, I've run into as well. So wouldn't you just clamp your two pieces of wood with your leather in between. Yes, that's a good guess, Ashiok Nightmare Beaver, which is a, a great thing to do, except when you're dealing with curves like this. Like I need to find a way to clamp that. Or maybe you don't glue the curve. Maybe you, maybe you get the one side in place first, then you have to put the other side in place and you just clamp the edge. And you're like, okay, the... The corners are going to be tricky, mm -hmm. but maybe it's okay that they're just because the leather is not going to if the if the leather is glued down on either side, yes, it's gonna it's gonna stretch and, and deform a little bit on the on the corner, but maybe not as much because the most of the leather is being held in place by glue. What if you wrap it around the bottle? <laughs> That's not going to help at all, Matt. <laughs> Ah, uh, let's see here. I, and I, I, I think given the lack of immediate responses I'm getting from the other leather workers in the chat there, uh, they're also thinking like, huh, what the hell do I do here? Or they're waiting for me to figure it out myself. I'm just disappointing them. No, no straight up. Corners are tough. Yep. <laughs> okay, good, good. I'm glad I'm not wrong there. All right, so what I'm thinking here is like these need to be rolled up in that way on both sides so they can get stitched through. You could use the bottle method to have something to calm your nerves. Because <laughs> this side is ideally going to be remaining flat and then that side is going to be doing that. So yeah, I think it's just going to be a matter of finding little yeah just i'm gonna need a bunch of little uh i want to say binder clamps 
I glue them, but sans glue, I don't have much advice. Yeah. yeah. Would we have a lot of? Oh uh, yeah. Binder and clips? Binks just says, yeah, binder clips are what does the job. We have like a like at least two dozen of those. Yeah. And then you can just make it, bend it to your will. As you get it around the edge. Huh. Well, I've got binder clips too at home, but we do we have we don't have contact cement here though, do we? I am unsure. I can't say no. Give me a second. Would you mind checking? Thank you. Ian, I know you look better, but wouldn't it be more comfortable to use in shorter sleeves? N not particularly block. It's pretty it's pretty temperate in here. Um, it'd probably be easier, but no, I, I do long. Do I have a diamond all in that kit? Diamond all. This is a sewing all, but it does have a diamond diamond blade. It's also where I keep my uh, it's also where I keep my leather stitching needles, which are blunted for purposes of stitching. I know nothing. Uh, da, 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 fingers crossed on a bar, barge and a heat gun. Animal glue is an, an animal glue is an adhesive that is created by prolonged boiling of animal connective tissue. The protein colloid glues are formed through hydrolysis, and the collagen in skin, bones, tendons, and other tissues similar to gelatin. The word collagen itself derives from the Greek kola, kola or glue. Thank you, cold turkey. We have super tough adhesive spray from Tough Guy. That's not going to be uh, what we want. What I do is align the tops or opposite corners, stitch together the corners, and then go for the corners with the aid of binder clips. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do on this one. So you know what? I think we've actually got ourselves... Actually, one of the things I keep in my stitching thing from the last time I did any amount of leather stitching is these two thick ass safety pins, which I use as a method of, you know, you, you stamp your first holes in and then you use the safety pins as a locking position to keep the other pieces in place. But, yeah. Needle on the floor. Oh good, this is one of the blunt needles, again, for stitching. Yes, sir. Keep in mind, you might need, you might not be able to use chisels well around the corners. Okay. Well, I think honestly, we've probably done as much as we can do today because we're going to need that glue, and I'm going to get myself some of that glue. So, in the meantime, we're just going to have to wait until the next time I get a chance to work on this bag. But I think we've got ourselves a hell of a good project here for the next few weeks. And that being said, I think it's probably a good time for us to draw this episode of a, to a close because it's nearly 9 p.m. and we've got ourselves some subs to deal with. So, Beach, yep. uh, before you run that, let's, uh, geez, what do I usually do here? Right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching Tinker Taylor Solar Fry tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure having you all here with me while I figure things out as I go along. Thank you so much to those of you in the chat who have been giving me all the good advice, because, boy, I'm, I, I, I might not screw this up. I might actually have a nice bag when we're done with this. Hey, yeah, let's uh, figure out what's up with the poll here, Beach. All right. I'm going to just refresh it one more time to make sure we have everybody's votes. Uh, so, <clears throat> coming in at the bottom with nine votes, because 90 people voted tonight. Did they? 91 people voted tonight. Good God. Paul accidentally swaps the SodaStream bottle with his nitroglycerin supply, causing a spontaneous combustion during the next live. No, Paul. No, Paul. Uh, another, uh, with 10 votes, Ian attempts to make a bag of holding, but instead of getting the storage dimension, accesses the glass eye dimension, turning all his belongings into glass eyes. Uh, with uh, 10 votes as well. The bag gets a small cut on its hand, forever giving Ian a taste for blood. With 31 votes, unknown to all the leather, for the bag is haunted, causing the bag to moo randomly for eternity. And uh, coming at the top with 33 votes, is just beating it by two votes, Ian's running low on supplies. He scavenges from around the moon base, creating a bag that truly came from the whole team. <laughs> wow. 
that that actually managed to get there and be accurate for once. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> All right. Well, as I said, thank you so much, everyone, for watching tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. We got work done, and it's been great. Um, Can I talk about what's coming up this week? I was just about to ask you, Beach, what is coming up this week in our schedule? All right. So it's Thursday today. Is it? And it will be the end of a broadcast, too, which means we start with Friday. Mm. Uh, and actually, hang on. I think I have the up next. You do. Do I? You should. We've used it before. I have the sub listing. Where did okay. you put it? It's not in any of my. Oh no! No, there is. There actually, the uh, the up next uh, crawl is not there. So we're going to use the upcoming week yeah, dreams that's right. instead. So uh, on now, kiss tomorrow starting at 9:30 a.m. It's uh, Kathleen and Cameron playing Christine Love's Analog: A Hate Story. I think it's their second uh, time out on this one. Uh, later in the day, starting at. 1 p.m. I hate you all. Is the Super Mario Party launch party, uh, where we'll just be subbing in a whole bunch of people, whoever's around the, the moon base, to do that. Uh, but Ian does get to come back and enjoy Friday Night Paper Fight, I think, correct? Correct, Why yes. is that? That's because it's the time for the Guilds of Ravnica draft, and I understand the color combinations of the Guilds of Ravnica, despite having not read the cards. That's starting at 6 p.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to roll into Adam's Game House on Saturday, uh, starting at noon or 11? 10? I can't read that, 11. actually. It's 11 a, is what the thing says, and he'll be playing uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> and then it is a live day, so we'll be getting to see Loading Ready Live at 6, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, and I believe we do have a pre-record for that as well, and there will be all sorts of other fun things that we do, but we don't know what they are yet. Uh, rolling into Sunday, what's coming up in Rhythm Cafe? In Rhythm Cafe, we will be playing a game that I will be telling you the title of because I wrote it down. Good, because la last night we were on, Heather was like, Ian knows what the game it is that we are playing, and mm -hmm. she does not have it. So, so. Good. so tonight, uh, this weekend, we will be playing Beat Hazard. Oh, cool. So be ready for, uh, for Hazardous Beats. Nice. Uh, rolling into Monday, where there should be a checkpoint plus, uh, but that is Thanksgiving Monday, mm -hmm. and so that is a tentative space at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and dice friends on Monday, non tentatively. Yes, it it looks like we might have to bump dice friends. Then ten, possibly tentatively. Keep yeah. your eye on uh, loading ready run at Twitter. Yeah, go, go watch the Twitter and and watch the uh, the schedule. I know we do have a we do have the calendar link uh, right off of there as well. We'll keep you posted as soon as possible, but that's where you can go to get all the deets on what's coming up. Yeah, everything through the rest of the week. We're gonna have nine o'clock on Tuesday at nine a.m. We're gonna have New Day Tuesday at uh, at noon on Tuesday again. I uh, um, I don't know what it is yet though, but one more. Uh, James is running back uh, PUBG uh, talking simulator on uh, on. Tuesday nights, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, roll into Lure MTG on Magic uh, on the Magic Channel on Wednesday morning, and then watch and play. Like it's just going to be more of what you love watching us do. <laughs> and that is our upcoming broadcast schedule for the week. But before we go, I'd like to, as always, thank everyone who has chosen to show their support here at Twitch.tv. We'd like to thank our our subscribers but before we do i also want to remind people that if you don't like subscribing here you can help us out by supporting us over at patreon.com slash loading ready run we really appreciate everyone who does do so there as well as all of you who just chose to show up in the chat either speaking to us through the magic of text or just hanging out and being here watching that is exactly why we do these things, and we are so happy that you come here to do them with us. Beach, who are our subscribers today? Starting with... Cinnamon, who is a brand new subscriber. Thank you for joining, and welcome to the channel. Also want to thank Zavarin, who is also a brand new subscriber. Thank you as well. Gravity Pike is a 55-month subscriber. Thank you for your continued support. And Larconis has subscribed for 31 months. Thank you as well. Banathar has subscribed for 15 months. Thank you so much for your continued support. And thank you to a tiny space marine who has subscribed for 51 months. Emmett T. Nervend is a subscriber who has subscribed for seven months. Subscriber, subscriber, subscriber. That's a, that's a Freakazoid reference also. Is it? Yes, I, it is. You know what? Okay, I'm going to come out here and admit I haven't seen Freakazoid, and I know that I need to fix that because it is so full of references that it, I will get all of them. Hey, 
Nolly3 has subscribed for 15 months. You got a three, that's divisible by 15 and fives. Spoon! <laughs> DSPMU for 22 months. Thank you so much for your continued support. Oragog is a brand new subscriber. Welcome to the channel and glad to see you. Everest Magnus has subscribed for 14 months. Thank you for continuing your support. And thanks to Broken Golem for giving subscriptions to Binks Bowling, Sid Previously Headache, and Crazy Zoni. Welcome to the channel, all of you. Larkit is also a brand new subscriber. Thank you for joining and for your support. And that brings today's storm count up to 115. Thanks for those 750 bits to Xanatos69 Type 1 E Block, Azure Shock, and Hey Lucky Annie for those dub bits, dub bits, dub bits. <sighs> that brings us to the end of today's broadcast here on the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. I've been Ian Horner. Thank you so much to Beach Deary on the board and Matt Griffiths on the camera. We will see you in a fort's night time, ever forward, never learning. <laughs>